Okay, so last time we left off, uh, we had our scene with just a reticle in the center, and then we had a button just in the scene that we could click. Basically this would happen on trigger that you would pull uh, on a VR headset. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set up a little bit more of the scene and then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the trigger pull and we're going to use a gaze control where if the reticle is open for more than two seconds then it'll actually handle a click event and then we can go on our merry way. So the first thing I'm do, going to do is I'm going to bring in the cube room that is supplied in the demos in Google VR and we're just going to use this environment piece because it's already set up for us and pretty nice. So we'll just drag that into the, the scene. You can see it's added to the game. Uh, we're going to scale this up a little bit. Let's scale this to like three. And then we'll reposition it pretty much where the camera is. Let's see if we can fly in here. Yeah, so the camera's kind of in the center of the room. And then we can take a look around. And you can see here we got our button still in the room. We can take a look around. There was no lighting or anything in this yet. Uh, we just have that directional light up here that's providing a little bit of light and shadows. And yeah, let's turn soft shadows on. Oh, we get some crazy anomalies there. So I'm just going to turn those off. And you can see we still have a button that's clickable there. Okay. Okay, so this scene is looking pretty good. Uh, you can see we have the environment in, we have the button in there. Uh, but I want to make it look a little bit more professional. And the way we can do that is we can add effects to the camera. And usually we come to this main camera right here, which is our single camera in the, uh, the scene. And we can go ahead and add effects and anything we want, scripts to it all day. But with VR, we got to do something a little bit different. If you remember in the GVR viewer main, it actually creates and generates the pre-render and the post-render cameras. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add that effects, all the effects to the post-render camera. So how do we do this? Well, we can go ahead and actually create two game objects for the pre-render and the post-render cameras, and the GVR viewer main will not make another set. So we won't have two sets of cameras, we'll just have one single set. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to create empty, and we're just going to call this GVR pre-render. And then we'll make another one. Post-render. Okay. You can see, and these are children to the GVR viewer main, because that's where they're created. So I'm going to click on GVR pre-render, and we're going to go up to components, Google VR, and we're going to add the pre-render. You can see that adds the camera with the pre-render script. And I'll click on post, Google VR, post render. And you can see we had the post render cameras. Now if we click play, you can see those cameras aren't auto-generated, but they're actually generated in the scene just like this. And we're still good. We can still click and everything like that and look around. So we're good there. So to the post render camera, I'm actually going to do add components. And I actually imported the standard assets and the effects. So we have all the effects that we need, image effects. Uh, you can see all the scripts. And we're actually going to use this Bloom script right here. So I'm going to go back to post render. And I'm just going to add it from here. So we'll do Bloom. And you can see instantly we get a, you know, a decent effect on there brings out the colors in the scene. So I'm going to turn the threshold down a little bit. You can see it starts blending up with the blur iterations. Bring the sample distance back a little bit. We can leave it just like that. Let's bump up the intensity. Push the threshold back. More blur iterations. There we go. 
now we can see we get a little bit of a blur effect and you can see the reticles even got a little bit of highlight to it and in contrast I can turn that off turn it on you know it really pulls out the white in this you know the lighter colors in the scene and when we add lighting and everything to this scene we're really going to see those effects take place So now we're going to go ahead and add the gaze control. If we're over the button for two seconds, we're going to start a timer uh, and then perform a click. And we're going to have to modify a few things, which I've already done, and I'll just show you. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is the GV reticle pointer. This is the actual reticle that we're going to modify. And then we're also going to look at the GV pointer input module which is going to handle the click event uh, after we finish our timer of two seconds. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the GV reticle pointer. We can jump into this script and scroll down a bit and we see we have on pointer enter, on pointer hover, and on pointer exit. The, uh, you can also see here that we are accessing my gaze controller script to say we're looking at an object and we want to start the gaze count on enter. And then when we exit an object, we're not looking anymore, and we're going to reset that gaze count and reset everything in that gaze controller script. Now, if we do stay on the object, uh, that's when the input uh, module is going to be uh, modified. So we have a handle pending click, but we don't really want that. We just want this handle trigger. This handle trigger event is going to be just like when we pull the trigger on the cardboard, the side of the cardboard, or another VR headset that you have pulling a trigger. So I'm going to go back to the scene here. In GVR reticle pointer, I'm actually going to add my gaze controller because it requires a GV reticle pointer be on this object. And I'm also going to tag this as my gaze controller. Now you can see I just added some bulls for using a gaze, and if we're looking at an object, and the gaze input is actually on the event system, so we're going to bring that in. And the image circle. Now we need to provide a reference to the user that something's happening in an amount of time. So I've, I've already made a prefab for that. It's just a simple canvas with an image inside of it. And you can see it's filled uh, with radial 360, and you can see that you know, we're just going to lurk time, basically to fill the amount of the circle. So I'm going to come back here and we're going to set that up. Now we should be able to just play this, hover over something, our circle fills and then we handle that click event. And if we're on it and we want to leave, we don't have any click event that happens. But if we stay on it, then it clicks. In the next video, what we're going to go over is we're going to go over using these buttons to click and remove the cube room or the travel room as we're going to call it and launch ourselves into a 360 degree sphere that has a uh, basically a giant panoramic stereoscopic photo on top of it. And then we can travel from place to place and just look around and see things. Thanks.